Bye, back on the road. And I thought I was done for. I honestly thought I might have to cancel this whole trip. Definitely just turn down someone's driveway. Oh, we're, we're in a farmer's field. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, don't fall over. Welcome to day three of me driving my electric moped, fully solar powered all the way from the UK to Italy. You'll be happy to know I am leaving today. I'm continuing on on the journey. It's been a bit of an experiment these first few days. It's taking a little bit longer than I expected to charge, but by the time I leave later this afternoon, the bike should be at 90% charge. The other exciting thing today is my friend and his family have already walked into town. The Olympic torch is passing through the town today on the way to start the Olympics in Paris. I get to see the Olympic torch running past. All morning, I've been charging the external box, which is like the buffer between the solar panels and the bike. Once I plug the bike into that, it's gonna start draining that at about 850 watts whilst it's still charging with solar. So it's gonna be draining faster than it's recharging, but if the sun stays out and it's not too cloudy, I should be able to get another 30% charge into the bike, which will take it to 90%. A lot of you have been asking about the equipment and I don't think I told you the exact brand yesterday. So the brand is Growot. They sent me this big battery bank, the Infinity 1300, and they sent me 800 watts of their portable solar panels, which I've been riding uh, tucked on the side of the moped. This took a little bit of planning to kind of figure that out. They are very heavy. Just the solar panels are 28 kilograms. I don't know how much that is, but that's also super heavy. So the bike feels like I've, I'm carrying another entire human on the back, weight-wise. For those of you that are kind of geeky and want to know all the power, watt hours and everything, this stores 1300 watt hours. These two batteries combined are 4,200 watt hours. So really I need almost three full charges from that battery to get this to 100%. Now I got like one and a half yesterday and depending on the sun, I should be able to do it in a day of really good sun all day. At the moment you'll see it's 82% charged, input 427 watts. But if I plug in the charger, I'll show you how much it's consuming. All right, so if I plug that in here. This is the app on my phone. It's connected to the Grow Up pack. I'm currently pulling 450 watts, lovely and using 839. Okay, also this is my new route that I'm planning. So I'm currently here, just west of Paris, and I'm gonna come all the way down, almost exactly southeast of where I currently am. I'm gonna cross over from Switzerland into Italy. This is very mountainous, but it's reduced my distance I have to cover per day. And this means I can get to Italy quite a bit faster. And then from here, it's all downhill to where Raya's dad lives. And depending on how quickly I get there, I may have to charge the moped at electrical outlets and cafes and stuff to get to Raya in time. I think that's achievable. I slightly had to adjust my plan, but it's gonna be an adventure and we're leaving very shortly. Just had my first shower of the trip. I don't know when I'm next gonna to get to shower, so I thought I'd take full use of uh, my friend's hospitality. It's kind of funny, I'm wearing my uh, workman trousers that I ordered. They have these like pouches for tools and screws and stuff. It's actually really handy when I'm riding to get snacks and cables and battery chargers without having to like open a bag and rubbish and quick access, which I like a lot. Oh. So I'm strolling into town. I don't even know what this town is called. I find it quite hard to pronounce French names, but I'll put it on the screen here. I'm definitely still not feeling 100% from my hernia operation, but I'm getting there. This just takes time. It's only been three weeks since surgery, so I think I've still got three weeks of recovery, really, until I'm hopefully back to normal. And then the night that uh, my friend rescued me, so not last night, the night before last, I don't know if I mentioned, but I pulled my back a little bit because I, I was like taking everything off the bike quickly when we parked up, and I lifted the battery with the whole back box, and uh, oh, I suddenly felt this sharp pain, and I, I was like, oh no, I pulled my back and the next morning I could not get out of bed. I just couldn't even sit up, I was in so much pain. And I thought I was done for. I honestly thought I might have to cancel this whole trip because I couldn't move. And amazingly, I took some painkillers throughout the day, it loosened up and uh, still feels a bit sensitive, but oh my gosh, feels a million times better. So big relief there, didn't have to cancel the whole trip. That would have sucked so hard on the first night. Wow, looks like everyone's lined up ready for the Olympic torch. 
I did not realize what a big deal this was. The whole town has come out to watch. This is amazing. I just spotted a little restaurant, popped in and got a espresso coffee. I've actually reduced my coffee intake the last few days, but uh, I do need it. I do need a little hit of caffeine just to get me through the day. That's pretty amazing seeing them hand over the Olympic torch. It's like a relay, I guess, from where the Olympics happened in Tokyo, I think. It's traveled all the way to Paris from there. The fact that we were, happened to be standing where they were doing the exchange was cool. What a, a lovely coincidence that I'm here as this is all happening. Right, I've just looked at the charge. I'm at 90%. That's what I aimed to get to today. So I'm gonna unplug the moped. As I'm packing up, putting the box back on, getting everything ready to leave. I'm going to leave the solar panels charging the battery till the very end and then I'm going to pack, fold all those down, put them on the bike and then head. Back on. <laughs> that lives there. That was a successful stop, a little bit longer than planned, but I'm only a day behind and with my adjusted route, I think I can make up the time. Bye, back on the road. Lovely, I am just so happy. So it's 6.25, we're leaving with 90% battery. I'm aiming to do 75 miles tonight. Now I think what's gonna be a bit better about tonight and not running out of battery is, I think when I get to about to eight or 9%, I think I'm gonna stop and that will allow me to just camp somewhere without worrying about having a full uh, catastrophic battery failure like I did the other night. That'd be nice. Oh, I'm just so looking forward to these sunny days as I'm going south. I think this route, I'm driving is um, pretty flat. There's not a lot of hills. Uh, I do feel like that first day there were a lot of hills. I, I don't know exactly how much, but it felt like a lot. So I'm gonna try and avoid as many hills as possible on the trip until the very end where I literally have to drive up the Alps. I was, uh, I was just thinking, what is it that I love about this so much? Like, what, why am I so excited to be doing this? And honestly, I think what it is, is the adventure for me is in the unknown. I think when you've got this very planned out, predictable travel itinerary, that doesn't excite me. And don't get me wrong, I, I don't mind traveling to relax and having like vacations, like holidays, but when it comes to an adventure trip, there needs to be a huge element of the unknown. And I think road tripping has that because you're, you kind of know where you're heading. You don't necessarily know how you're getting there or what you're going to find along the way. And I think something like the electric road trip, especially in this scooter, is I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to run out of battery. I don't really, although I've pinned on the map where I'm going, I don't know what it looks like. I don't, don't really know what that place is or where I'm going to sleep. Am I just going to pull over in a field like this and uh, camp for two days? Or, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Am I, am I going to get told off by a farmer? Am I going to get stuck in the field because my bike's too heavy and I sink in the mud? Who knows? Also, it could start raining tomorrow. So there's just so many unknown elements and I just find that exciting. So maybe when you're planning adventures and trips and you're wanting to find more excitement, uh, do more spontaneous things, things where there's lots of unknown elements to them. When I was 14 actually, when I first did a huge international trip with my parents, we flew into Indonesia, into Sumatra. I think Medan maybe is the capital, Medan. Anyway, when we arrived, we had zero plan, nothing booked, no hotel booked, nothing. We just literally got off the plane and ended up having the most incredible adventure. We met a taxi driver. My dad asked if he could give us a tour around the whole of Sumatra. He ended up picking up his wife and taking us off for seven days in his minivan. That just, that kind of stuff just doesn't happen. It was, he wasn't really even a tour guide. He was just like a random taxi driver who was like, can I go pick up my wife? We were like, yeah, bring her along. Anyway, point is, do more spontaneous, last minute, less planned trips, and I think you'll have more fun. Just passing a combine harvester. I didn't know it was harvest season, because I was thinking, oh, I could just camp up and kind of camouflage myself in a random field, 
and I'll be fine because they're not harvesting till like later in the summer or autumn. But I don't really know much about farming, so I'm glad I saw that. I'm going to be really careful about where I choose to camp now. I do not want to get run over by a combine harvester in the morning. Come up to my first village. I really know what's going on here. Where's the cinema? Some mad wild goose chase. Oh, these little French villages are so cute. Well, I have just seen the most incredible power consumption I've had so far. It says 38 watt hours per mile. So that's, I'm getting more than a mile per percent right now. So if I was to do this all day, I could get more than 100 miles in full charge. But there's gonna be like times like this where you stop and start and it suddenly puts that up. But that's uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, basically 42 watt hours per mile is, is exactly 100 miles. I don't wanna be juicing it all the way down to 0%. So from here to Italy, my aim is to do 75 miles a day. If I can do a little bit more, great. But remember, I need to charge as well. So if I do end up having a bit more, then that's actually great. It means the next day I don't have to start from such a low battery percentage. Bonjour. Bonjour. Look how cute this town is. Oh yeah. Hey, this looks private to me. This definitely looks private. This is a track. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say, definitely just turn down someone's driveway. Also, I'm just gonna stick on the road because I think it's trying to take me onto a bike path. Yeah, still trying to detour me onto that bike path, but I'm sticking on this road. I think this is fine. Oh, I had to stop back there because I got a fly in my eye. And that's why I got my goggles on. Google is sending me down there. I don't think, I don't think that's where I want to go. Um, that, that doesn't look like a well-used path at all. Um, there's a parallel road. I'm going to stick to the road. I've got a feeling that it is going to take me down one of these little random cycle tracks. So let's spin around. But I'm going to ignore Google for the moment, but I've got a feeling we're doing some off-roading soon. Yeah, I think I'm just... So much of this is just me trusting the, the route that Google shows me. But back when I cycled to Africa with a group of friends uh, to raise money for this charity in South London. On the day that I was supposed to plan the route, I don't think I was using Google, I was using another route planner, but it basically took us to a dead end and we were so many miles into this route which had a, a closed gate that we had to turn back and most people couldn't cycle. And that was when I ended up cycling through the night. I don't know if many of you remember that vlog series, but um, it just shows you that you can't fully trust routes. Uh, there's a chance I'll end up at one of these crazy like paths in the middle of nowhere. I would have been mopeding along that hedge line in the middle of the field. Okay, I'm trusting Google. It's taking me on a wild detour and there's rabbits all over the shop. Where is this road gonna lead? Oh my goodness, this is hilarious. Oh, it, it seems to be an actual road on the map, but we'll see. Hey, this looks like a bit more of a legit road, slightly. Yeah, okay, nice. So cute. If I was on a faster bike and was able to go on the fast roads, I think I'd miss out on half of this fun. No way, this is tiny. Where is this taking me? Oh, this is so cute. Are you kidding me? That's not good. That is not good at all. Am I gonna have to get through there? That looks locked to me, but I'm gonna have to get through because there's no other way. Let's skim through here. This does look like a does look like a road of sorts. Could be private, who knows? This is definitely somewhere I could like camp up in the middle of that field and uh, charge solar. Oh dear, where is this taking me? Oh no. Guys, we are, this isn't even the cycle path. This looks like a barely used footpath. Oh no, come on. To worst case, I get the bike stuck, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Oh wow, it's just, okay, Whew. Be back on a natural kind of road. Wow, that is wild. <laughs> I'm glad I'm wearing my goggles. Almost swallowed a fly then. I'm sure there's farmers watching me from their house wondering what the heck is a moped cruising along my private track doing? Sorry. Oh yeah, back to a normal road. I think I made it. Oh, well that was quite detour. That was quite the adventure. All right, very soon I'm gonna stop and eat some dinner. I do have a bunch of dehydrated meals with, and a stove and that's a bit of a, a hassle getting that all set up but also have some leftovers from yesterday's dinner which I'm gonna pop out my bag and I don't want to stop for long maybe like maybe I can stop for like 30 minutes and charge up my cameras 
eat and then get back on the road because I don't want to be driving in the pitch black. Oh, we're, we're in a farmer's field. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, don't fall over. So I might find a nice little spot by the river, actually. This looks lovely. Woo! <laughs> lovely, what a lovely little spot. Oh yeah, check this out. Wow, that looks old. Oh yeah, perfect. Little spot by the river here. This is ideal. There we go. Oh, are you kidding me? This is lovely, absolutely lovely. Right, we're stopping. We've done 26 miles. We've used 28% battery. So we're down to 62%. Oh, and it's time for a little refreshment and recharge of the cameras anyway. Oh, right. I'm also gonna um, put on my jacket and uh, get a little bit warmer for the next drive. I'm pretty happy with the dinner spot I stumbled across. Beautiful little riverside location. This is so peaceful, just chilling by the river. I'll show you what I got for dinner. I might need to get my uh, cutlery out of my main bag, but check this out. I've got some tabbouleh and a vegan burger that I cooked yesterday night. It's cold, but uh, and it's kind of falling apart, but this will be quite a good dinner. I'm just gonna perch on this rock. Right, my belly's full. I'm ready to hit the road again. It's getting chilly. I'm gonna put my balaclava on. Honestly, I might just put it all the way on at this point. All right, woo! Back on the road, baby. Oh, yeah, it feels so warm and cozy. Get those goggles back on. Just trying to get flies in my eyes again. Right, 48 miles to go, 61% battery. I'm hoping to get there with more than 10% battery left. That would be lovely. Let's see how we get on. Look at this light, golden, absolutely golden. These fields have already been harvested, so something like this could work. But I think I'll be quite visible, that's the only problem. I need to find the perfect hidden spot that's also very sunny. I've still got uh, 44 miles to go though. But I'm just looking at potential similar places. Oi, how beautiful is this? I don't know how it's so cold. I think it's still 17 degrees, but I don't believe that. I, I don't think I'm cut out for these kind of things in the winter, to be honest. Summer adventures is where it's at. The sun looks like it's setting. It's 9.30. Um, I thought I'd get a little bit more light, but still very pleasant. I'm so happy I managed to figure out doing this trip. This is just so incredible. I was saying to my friend Matt, arriving at his after a day of being on the road, it was just so nice just having that headspace. I think the busyness of life sometimes, especially parenting, even though it's the biggest joy ever, it can be mentally demanding whilst you're juggling all the other things in life. So having a headspace like this, I'm not on my computer, I'm not on my phone, not listening to music, I'm just with my own thoughts and it's it's refreshing. The sun is dipping. That's the last light of the day. And uh, we're heading into the night. Oh, hey, doing a little cheeky one through this town. Oh, yo, straight up castles everywhere. I think even three days into this trip, I already have a more magical view of, of France. Like I knew France is pretty cool, but this just has been just incredible. I think, again, I just, it's because I've never gone through these little villages, really. And then next month, I'm driving down to the south of France to meet up with Raya. She's flying down and we're doing a family holiday. But I'm just going to be on the, the highways the whole way and I'm going to miss all of this. So I'm so glad I'm getting to experience this and, and do this trip. Check, check, check one. I've ridden 50 miles. We have depleted 57 percent of our battery. Got 25 miles to go. It's going to be a bit touch and go. Bonjour. Bonjour. I'm not sure if it's going to be as crazy as the first day, but I really hope I arrive with around 10 percent battery. Might be a little bit less. Good thing is it's not an exact location, so I can um, just find somewhere random. I am very tired, very cold and uh, really looking forward to snuggling up in the tent, to be honest. I'm going to try and do some editing but I might just do it in the morning, I don't know. I'm going to be sitting around waiting for the bike to charge anyway, so maybe I just do that, but it'd be nice to get a little bit worked on tonight. I think when I get in, I'll fire up my, I'll put my tent up, I'll fire up my stove, 
make a little cup of coffee, warm up, maybe do an hour or two of editing and then, and then get some sleep. Yeah, not as enjoyable driving at night. I wonder if there's a way of warming up more than I can really. I've got two pairs of trousers on. The wind's kind of going through the edges of the vents in my goggles and just cold. My whole face is kind of cold, my head's cold. Everything's a little bit cold. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. It's definitely more enjoyable with the sun out, but I don't know how I'm gonna do that and, and charge. So this is the current plan. I do half of my riding in golden hour and sunset and then half of my riding at night. I think we could get there. It is 11, almost 11 p.m. I feel like we could get there about 12.30 to where I'm planning to go. I don't know if you can see anything, but this is like a really sketchy road in the middle of nowhere, just in the forest. Look at this, look at this cobbled bridge. What the heck? I don't know where I'm going. This is quite crazy. I've still got 17 miles left, so that's a full, uh, full hour of driving. I've only got 21% battery. I just feel like this is the most random back road. <laughs> I wouldn't want to run out of battery here because there's no solar. I'm just completely under a canopy of trees. But deeper into the forest we go. I'm hoping we just are about to rejoin another road. It's getting pretty bumpy. Oh wow, it's a proper grass track now. Oh wow, this is crazy. Oh, proper, proper, proper bumpy up road. Okay. Oh, we're, we're in a farmer's field. Oh shit. Oh, it's telling me to go straight still. This is absolutely mental. Okay, a little less bumpy, still just grass. I'm hoping we're rejoining a road. Come on. Come on, baby. Woof. This is so mental, but I love it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? That's all I'm gonna say is what? Whee. Oh, don't fall over. Okay, okay. This looks like an this looks like a road. Maybe back on a road. Oh, I love it. Love it so much. Wow. We're back, baby. This kind of works. Okay. I'm gonna set up camp here, I think. Right, I am freezing. I have parked up for the night and I think I found a good camp spot. I'll show you better in the morning. Oh, a car's coming. I am by a road, but uh, there's kind of like some piles of gravel and I don't think anyone's gonna care. So I'm just gonna pop my tent here and camouflage it as best as possible. And then, yeah, hopefully get some solar in the morning. I need to warm up. I was shivering so much I couldn't really film this, but I put the solar panels out and now I'm gonna cover up the bike with my camouflage cover. I think people will see something, but they won't necessarily know it's an electric moped. I'm gonna try and boil myself a little coffee. Whoa! Are you seeing this? This is sick. Oh, that is. Oh, can I snuggle down here? Oh my goodness, that is grade A. Freaking 10 out of 10 coffee. Oh my goodness. Right, I'm gonna warm up a bit more, get in my sleeping bag. I may get my laptop out and do some editing. Thankfully, I've got 25% power in this battery bank. And as soon as the sun comes up, that's gonna start charging. Yeah, I think I've done quite well. 65 miles, not quite what I wanted, but we did start with 90% battery and we'll see how the charging goes tomorrow. The dream is it's a beautiful sunny day. We get a full 80, 90% charge on the moped and then I can do another kind of 60 miles or more. Yeah, so hopefully you're enjoying this series and you're as equally intrigued to whether I can actually get to Italy or not solar powered. Um, it's looking potential at this point. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, please do. And I'll see you in the morning for another day of the adventure. Peace out, enjoy life and live the adventure. Boom. It's 6.30. It's looking like there's a storm brewing, but the weather forecast says that the sun is gonna come out in about 30 minutes.